Hello friends, it's me, Catherine Ivers Norton, the author of The Stain. I'm coming to you from Facebook jail where I've been sent for the scandal of posting a, a photograph of the book that I wrote, The Stain, on Facebook. Um, as you can see, it's a very sexy photo. It was taken by Dom Reese Vasquez of Ithaca, New York. Uh, Dom Reese is known for erotic and boudoir photography. And this is nothing compared to a lot of the work that she's done. It's so beautiful. Please check out her website at domariesvazquez.com um, and see, see what she's all about. She's really cool. She's one of my friends and I, I adore her. Um, so as you can see, Facebook jail accommodations are, are quite nice here. Uh, I have company. My German shepherd, Jake, is here. He's right beside me. And uh, my great Pyrenees, Mishka, is somewhere, uh, somewhere, probably causing trouble, may, mayhem somewhere. <laughs> so you might see them wandering around. Um, just putting that out there. Um, so um, Facebook jail. Yeah. Uh, right now I'm doing my 30. <laughs> I got about two weeks left. They keep giving me time for doing I don't know why they're picking on me, but they are. And that, it's good. It's actually good for me um, because I'm, I'm exploring other social media platforms. I've been working hard on editing the second book, which should be released in mid-December. I, uh, I'm having a custom piece of jewelry designed for the front cover of that book um, by Deborah Cole here in Ithaca, who's an art, art artist, and um, it's called Coming Together. So there's a lot going on. So even though I'm in jail, I, I'm not, you know, no one's pushing me down. I'm actually getting more work done than if I was spending hours on Facebook every day. So this is a blessing and not a curse. This is actually good for me. Um, but one of the things that I realized from my first book reading is that I need a lot more practice reading. So um, that's my intention today is to read um, from the first chapter, uh, just a, you know, how Cassandra meets Sergey, um, what the stain is all about. We encounter the stain here, how they meet over a stain. And, um, and then I'm hoping that people will give me feedback um, in the comments on my blog. Um, maybe words of encouragement or, you know, criticism, you can tell me to slow down, to enunciate, to pause, I don't know, drama, I don't know, whatever it is that you want to tell me, I, I, I welcome all feedback. So thank you so much for listening. And let's get started. Okay. So here we are, the stain, chapter one, beneath the crescent moon, New York City, United States, October, 1996. Fortune flung me from the sheltered waters of academia onto the island of cultured savages, a fish out of the water about to be eaten alive. This fashion show of an Upper East Side cocktail party was hosted by my new boss, Dr. Jerome O'Neill, the owner of a busy psychotherapy practice in Midtown Manhattan. Jerry was tall and stocky with a big smile and a bright sense of humor that immediately put people at ease. He introduced me lightheartedly to the socialites as Dr. Cassandra Abington, my latest acquisition. I immediately forgot their names, of course. I told a middle-aged woman wearing a blue dress I just moved to the city after completing my PhD at the University of Rochester. Where is that? She asked. Rochester is the third largest city in New York. How can an adult not know the major cities in her own state? Some New Yorkers are so self-involved, it's as if life does not exist anywhere else. I might have been astounded, but I was already used to this phenomenon after a month in the city. Upstate, I simply replied. That was Siberia as far as she was concerned. She smiled with disinterest and began talking about herself and her series of husbands. I encouraged her to continue and relaxed into the safe harbor she provided. I dreaded the moment between conversations when I suddenly found myself standing alone while everyone else gathered in groups. A late arrival caught my attention. The blonde man had a medium build, stood less than six feet tall and appeared in his mid thirties. He surveyed the crowd as if he were searching for someone. Our eyes met and I felt a chill like icy fingers stroking the innermost reaches of my abdomen. The last time I had that feeling was when I lost control of my vehicle and skidded off a winter road. I shivered at the memory. I quickly looked away and realized Blue Dress had stopped speaking. And she was eyeing me quizzically. Do you know him? She asked in a hushed tone. No, I replied. 
Well, I've never seen him before. She harumphed. I would have remembered that outfit. He was wearing a smart looking black suit with a, with a dark gray dress shirt unbuttoned at the neck. Glancing to the other men with their necks bound with conservative ties, it seemed an unusual choice for this affair. My glass was empty, so I excused myself and went to the bar. The Cabernet Sauvignon rose in a red tsunami as I lifted the glass. The wine threatened disaster, but did not breach the rim. Don't worry, it's just nerves, I told myself. Hand tremors were a bad sign. I was not adjusting well to the city. The constant noise rattled me, the crowds made me uncomfortable, and I felt pressure to perform well at the party. To make things worse, I felt like a bumpkin among the sleek and fashionable New Yorkers. My dress was lovely, but it came from a clearance rack in a discount store. I didn't know the designer because the garment tag was missing. To me, it didn't matter, but I worried everyone knew I went the cheap route and judged me. I reminded myself that people constantly evaluate other people. This was true. The fault in my thinking was the assumption that their assessment of me would be negative. Knowing that did not make me feel any better. I retreated through a French door that opened onto a delightfully deserted balcony. The, a chilly breeze from the west felt crisp, clean, and smelled faintly of apples. The view was impressive from the 11th floor. The dark expanse of Central Park was only a block away, while city life dazzled in every other direction. The sky was slightly overcast with a hint of the crescent moon visible through the clouds. I leaned on the railing, closed my eyes, and took deep breaths, exhaling slowly to release tension. A feeling, uh, a peaceful feeling gradually settled over me. Freshly composed, I decided to return to the party. At the door, I paused to take one last look at the moon, which was more visible now. On a whim, I lifted my wine glass in grateful salutation for the gift of peace I had just received. The door suddenly opened behind me, jolting me with a start. A crimson wave crested the rim of the glass, spilled onto my left breast, and then flowed down the front of my cream-colored dress. Oh no, I cried, and immediately began to dab my dress with a tiny paper napkin from the bar. What a catastrophe. I am very sorry, a man's voice said, with a European accent I could not quite place. I looked up to find the face of the late arrival. As our eyes met for the second time, everything stopped. I looked and uh, I took in every contour of the stranger's countenance. I was sure I'd never seen anyone like him before, and yet he seemed oddly familiar. He had Slavic features of that, I was sure. If he was taller and stockier, I might have imagined him to be a hockey player. His eyes were brilliant sapphire blue, the shade of a clear January sky high in the mountains. They blazed with rare intensity beneath finely cut eyebrows that rolled over a long straight nose with a slight bump in the middle. He had prominent cheekbones and a high proud forehead graced by a short mane of fine sandy blonde hair. His closely shaved skin revealed a flawless porcelain complexion. My attention lingered on his smooth pale rose lips which seemed pressed into a tight expression of concern. Concern? I suddenly realized he was offering me his handkerchief. Feeling the hot flush of embarrassment rise to my cheeks, I glanced down and accepted the cloth. A golden fish leaping above three stylized lines of blue water was embroidered on fine white linen. I handed it back to him. There is no need to ruin your lo lovely handkerchief. I will, I will take my dress to the cleaners tomorrow, I said. No, no, he insisted. I cannot allow a beautiful woman to be seen in society with a stain of my doing. It seemed strange he was so concerned. Actually, I admitted, I am a stained magnet. Please do not blame yourself. I should not be allowed to drink red wine with my clothes on. I added and chuckled softly at my inane attempt at a joke. He did not laugh. There was a studious expression on his face. Perhaps my jab at humor missed the mark. Look, I think I have a solution, I said, as I reached up and pulled out the large rhinestone studded comb to release my French twist. My hair cascaded down past my shoulders in loose waves. See, if I move my hair onto the front and I'm careful not to move around too much, I can cover most of it. I explained, pleased with my handiwork. He did not reply. I lifted my head and looked directly at him for the third time. 
His lips parted slightly and his face wore a strange expression of wonder. He seemed to be looking through me as if he remembered something from long ago. I searched his face until his gaze returned. Our eyes locked and I shuddered, feeling the icy fingers return to stroke my belly once again. I felt like running, but I was transfixed. What is your name? He asked, finally releasing the tension. I blinked and glanced away, stunned. Cassandra, I replied softly. He motioned to a small table with two chairs and pulled one out. Please sit down, Cassandra, he said. I took the seat, grateful for the opportunity to give my knees a rest. His intensity was a bit much and I was beginning to feel shaky again. He set his half full glass on the table. There was a tiny red puddle left in mine. You must be freezing, he observed with concern. It's barely four degrees. I knew he meant Celsius. It was about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm comfortable, I said, and it was the truth. I'm from the North Country, Lake Placid, in the Adirondack Mountains, near the Canadian border. I love the outdoors, even in winter. Nothing can keep me inside. He removed his jacket and wrapped it around my shoulders. Mountain girl or not, I will not allow you to freeze on my watch. He replied, his jacket smelled manly with a hint of cologne, and I enjoyed the feel of the satin lining caressing the bare skin of my shoulders. I would usually decline such an offer, but I had to admit it felt good. I did not want to take it off, so I simply said, thank you. Somewhere in the back of my mind, I heard my mother cheering, graciously accepting compliments and always saying please and thank you were essential lady lessons. He watched me for a moment before he spoke. Your glass is empty, he stated bluntly. Try some of mine, he said. It'll warm you. I lifted the glass to my lips and sniffed the clear liquid. One whiff told me it was vodka. Straight, no ice. Ugh, how horrible. I glanced up and noticed an I dare you expression on his face. Not one to back down from a challenge, I tried it. To my surprise, it was so smooth, it slipped down my throat, albeit with a slight burn on the back end. This vodka was rather polished for such hard liquor. Vodka does not stain, he added with a slight wink. A sweet smile crossed his face that melted my defenses. He said, I am Sergey." That's how they meet. And uh, I'm going to do a couple more of these videos this week and get them posted. So please uh, offer feedback and put it in the comment section on the, um, the blog. And I will definitely see them. And I, I most definitely appreciate everything that you can you know, offer. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm definitely a work in progress. So thank you so much for listening. Thanks for joining me. Um, you're my first visitors to Facebook jail. <laughs> And uh, hopefully I'll be out soon and stay out, but you never know. I'm kind of a badass, so I'll probably get in trouble again. You know. <laughs> anyway, have a great day. Enjoy life. Be kind to others and be kind to yourself and spread love. All right. Thanks. Bye.